we stand. No power of darkness. The heights and depths of hell. It is in Christ we stand. Yes. It's where we made by mind. We sold out to Christ. Life has taught, taught us that there's nothing more valuable, more profitable than Jesus Christ. The unspeakable God, gift that God has given us in Christ. It is in Christ we stand alone. Am I right? Yes. If you experience that, it should be joy overflowing your soul. Because it is in Christ we stand. I've been with Jesus quite a while and each day is another day of experiencing him. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Growing and maturing in him. <coughs> and all you can grow <coughs> in any respect is <coughs> whatever you're eating has to supply you with the substance of what you eat. Eat chocolate all day and uh, you can't sleep at night. Uh, sometimes Jay will have a uh, Mountain Dew early and he won't go to bed until 12 1 o'clock. The sugar has him hyped up. There was a player with the bullets uh, not what is the, the wizards. And uh, every time he, before he to go, go play ball, he drank uh, uh, one of these big ones, with mm -hmm. a 24 ounce or something like that, <coughs> before he went to play. Mm -hmm. Caffeine and sugar mm -hmm. were just sitting here. Mm -hmm. But he eventually had to stop drinking because they were playing uh, havoc on his heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's what you eat. <coughs> really determines your growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really determines really who you really are. Mm -hmm. It's what you eat. Mm -hmm. Because if what you eat has become you, mm -hmm. it is what you desire. Right? Mm -hmm. I just can't go to bed without some chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't live without the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And perhaps with not having a piece of chocolate, you will get more peaceful and restful. Amen. Right now. But it's all about what you eat. And if you eat Jesus, <clears throat> the life supply to the believer, the more you ingest, the more of him is put on display. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't eat a certain food and it's not to put on display. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Eat french fries and you might have some heart problems, some cholesterol problems mm -hmm. later on in life. So what you eat really determines who you are and what you display. Amen. Amen? Yes. Don't you eat? What do you eat? That's your problem. What are you eating? Mm -hmm. I know what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. Fat back and Mercy. Well. fried chicken and uh -huh. chicken backs and chicken necks and gizzards <laughs> and candy. A stellar diet of candy is not good for you. True. Right? It's not good. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> And you don't know the results until you have a checkup. <clears throat> Even with Christ. Thank you. Until you have a checkup. Thank you. That's right. You've been eating the wrong stuff, Willie. Really. That's why you don't get no victory. That's why you can't overcome anything. You've been eating from another plate. But you eat of Christ and uh, he will strengthen you to be an overcomer. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you again for this morning. Thank you for the elder as he spoke to us concerning those things of the blood of Jesus Christ and, and, and the cleansing of the conscience that we may serve you in spirit and in truth. We ask now that you might speak to our hearts along these lines of speaking. Speaking. You have to have a voice, Jesus, and it's my voice. There has to be a vessel that contains you and it's our bodies that you live and have access to speaking only at our discretion. Thank you now. Praise you for your goodness and praise you for your kindness and praise you for the work that you've done in your son, Jesus Christ, when you raised him from the dead to enable us to walk in spirit and in truth. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. In addition, on your, on your, in your scriptures here, I think that <clears throat> what Paul is speaking of, and we're going to look at it on, our, on the sheet here. Excellent prophesying builds up the church. Mm -hmm. Not speaking in tongues, but prophesying. Mm -hmm. Right? Prophesying builds up the church. I think all of us can agree that we got, that we have what we have in growth because of prophesying. All right? It wasn't that Elder Miles, or Jay, or myself, when we came in on Sunday mornings or even in the night, that we were speaking in tongues. Huh? Uh, because I, I, I don't speak in tongues. I, I can't re remember in my years of being in the ministry, ever speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. I've heard tongues, but I didn't know what the individual was saying. Mm -hmm. He could have been saying something that he that was genuine, or he could have been some saying he had learned. I don't know. I, there was no interpreter there. So really, there was no growth on my part or anybody else's part because we, we couldn't understand what he was saying. Mm -hmm. But the preacher, when he preached, or the teacher, when he taught, that's when I could really consume more Christ in that format than I could. You, can't, you just can't speak in tongues and think you're going to grow. There's no way, because the, the person that's speaking, he's speaking unto God and not unto the body of Christ. <laughs> the speaking here is about prophesying. Yeah. And prophesying means speaking forth and speaking for God. Let's, let's look, look. God is in us, right? In the person of Jesus Christ. God only has one voice, but also has a collective voice in the body. But each part of the body had to, each member of the body had to speak in the, under the discretion of the Holy Spirit. So God has a, he, has, he can speak, but many times we keep him quiet. Because he only has our voice to speak. All right, right? Jesus said, the word that I speak, they're not my words, but the words of him that dwell where? On the inside of me. So we have him on the inside of us, but also we, we study the word and get it on the inside of us. So when we speak, we speak the word of God in the spirit. <clears throat> You see that word? Mm -hmm. Now you can have the word in you, but the word is not prompted by the spirit. It could be prompted by the knowledge of, of flesh. And it goes out to make its own ideology and things of that nature. Now that's why you have the organized church. You have an organized church because the ministers preach, and I don't I don't have any problem saying that the ministers preach out of their own concept, mm -hmm. out of their own wisdom and knowledge, mm -hmm. not out of Christ. But when you're speaking out of Christ, then the, the, the individual grows. If he's speaking flesh, the individual never grows. You can't grow. You can't grow in the flesh in, in the knowledge of Christ. You only have to, can have the knowledge of the Spirit by growing in Christ. All right. Now, in addition to calling on the name of the Lord, those in the early church did a great deal of what? Speaking about the Lord. About the Lord. Well, if they were speaking about the Lord, 
not just speaking, but a great deal of speaking. They had a great deal of the Lord in them, and they acquired a lot of, of knowledge of Christ in a, in a daily experience. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So when, when we came, when they came together, they spoke of who? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they lived a life manifesting Christ. Mm -hmm. And they lived a life in the Spirit, so when they came together, they would have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Not about something that was not Christ but something that was all about the all-inclusive one. Mm -hmm. Where you've been eating well. and what that eating has done for you over a period of time, what you eat is really what you actually put on display mm -hmm. and what you actually talk about, mm -hmm. what you eat. I don't know what you eat, but you ought to know what you eat because what you eat is what's going to come out of you. And I'm not talking about food. I'm talking psychology, uh, the, the, uh, the things that you watch on TV, the ideas that you have, the things that you want, or the things that you miss, the things you don't have, or other people. That, those are the things that you actually consume and actually you speak of. Amen. What you speak of is really kind of like your life. Am I right? Mm -hmm. When you see a football player... He talks about football. That's all he talks about. Why? That's his life. You see a baseball player, he talks baseball because what? That's his life. You see a drug dealer, uh, he speaks about drugs all the time. But you know what? That's his life. You see a prostitute, she talks about how to make money through her body. That's what she talks about. The different ways and the different ways that we can acquire something of this world. You see a preacher, that's about about, about uh, that's a Harlan. A Harlan only talks about what money and how he can acquire more money Amen. and how he, I can make you into a Harlan and you can acquire a more money. Amen. See, what you eat is really what you put on display. <clears throat> What's going to come out of you, right? Mm -hmm. Can we agree with that? Mm -hmm. So we look we look at ourselves personally and say, what comes out of me? That determines what, what, what I'm really eating. <clears throat> you have a little snack of Jesus here uh -oh. and a whole uh, 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 m m m whole uh, entree of something else. Buffet. Buffet. With a little bit of Jesus and a little snack. And that's on Sunday morning. And we only get you on Wednesday night, so we got on Sunday morning to Wednesday to next Sunday morning, that little snack has already consumed everything it could and doing everything it could in you. But with more of Christ in you, the more the world, the more the, the system cannot cannot defeat you. Come on here. Because you're putting more of Christ on the screen. Mm -hmm. And that means that just because you didn't get here, you, you should you, you didn't eat. You can eat at your own leisure. Amen. Amen. At home. Read your own scriptures in the morning. <coughs> Uh, in the afternoon, in your quiet time. But in your quiet time, most time we we eating something that are serving no real purpose. Amen. We eating something from the TV or something from our computers or something from our smartphone, and it's really not uh, contributing to growth. We're feeding more and more of the flesh. We're not we're not even realizing, but we're saying Paul said, make no provision for the flesh. But as soon as we get a chance, we just go and make provision for the flesh. And don't spend time uh, uh, with Jesus and allowing the Spirit to feed us and to help us to mature and grow in Christ. You see how it works? And this was it. And <clears throat> they spoke of Jesus. Uh, the Lord in the, did not, when speaking about Jesus, they did a lot of calling first. Because you can't speak unless you call. And there are two ways. You got to be called by God, and then you call on God so you can speak. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's common sense. Mm -hmm. God called you. You didn't know you were lost, that you need to be called until he called you. God know you need to be called, but we we trans, uh, prompted around for years as if we didn't need to be called. Mm -hmm. We didn't, didn't even know that we need to be called. Amen. 
God knew you needed to be called. And at the proper time, God did what? He called you. Now, how you responded, uh, I don't know. But if he called you, 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 you went. Now God wants you to eat so that you can, you can speak more about his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, last Sunday, I think we spoke about that. Qualifying you uh, to call and qualifying you to speak. Mm -hmm. What a qualifying you to speak is a process that goes on all the time. Mm -hmm. How you learn how to speak? By speaking. Mm -hmm. Right? But we talked about uh, my grandson and Rain and, and Jordan and all of us who have kids that grew. When they first started out, they first got here, they couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. Right? When you're first born again, you can't talk. Right. About Christ, you don't know nothing, nothing about it. That's it. That's it. But what you may have perhaps heard, right. and that what you heard was not about Christ, it was about something else other than Christ. Right. You see? So as you grow, if you grow in your spiritual uh, 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 transformation, God, God grows you so you can speak. Mm -hmm. And you have to eat the proper uh, material or proper eating so that you can speak Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not speak denominationalism or things like that. You speak Christ. Whatever you eat, that's what you speak. Whatever you 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 growing in, that's what put on display. You see what I'm saying? The 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 process is about transformation from the darkness to light. And always coming from darkness into light. That there's never a time that you all of a sudden you, you grow in light to the point that there's no further growth. Amen. There's always growing in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's inexhaustible in his growing and also in his supplying you for growth. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, God didn't, we don't have a God that runs out of anything. No. Glory. No, thank you. Uh, you read thank the word this morning. You. He's rich. Yes. And rich means that he's, a, he, he's, a, he's there's, no, he, there's no supply he cannot Amen. meet. Everything that you need is in Him. You see what I'm saying? So there's a constant feeding and a constant growth. Now, when, when you experience Christ during the week, He called you and you called on Him. Now it's for you to experience Him in your day to day walk. And in your day to day walk, there should be a lot of calling. He called you. And so you're going to. In your day to day walking for your process of maturing and growing, you have to call on him to enable you to finish whatever it is that he's placed before you. Your daily walk. You're going to face something. And you can't overcome it by yourself. You have to have Christ in you to overcome. That's why you what? Call on him. Call on him. When I pull in my, in my uh, driveway, I'm calling the Lord right there because I don't know what I'm facing when I get home. <laughs> Everything might be all right when I get home, but most of the time, I, I, I could be bringing something in myself. Oh, yeah, that's that's so true. It's not necessarily what's in your house. That's it's right. what you're bringing in yourself. Right. So a lot of calling has to be, be redirected at me. Right. What am I bringing here? Yeah. So I need Jesus to help me to allow him to show up before me. Thank you. And if I keep that in mind, then I think everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. So the calling goes both ways, not only for those, but for, for you too. But I think mostly for ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You see? You can, well, you can pray that God will correct something in somebody's life, but a lot of times that correctness is, is where it needs to be in your life. If you can see something in somebody else's life yeah. that needs to be done, it's probably need to be done in your life too. That's why you recognize it. Mm -hmm. If God had cleaned you up, you don't see that in other people. But what that place that God had not worked at in your life, you, you actually see it in other people's lives. They'll get straight here. Well, have you, have you got straight there yet? Hey. I wish God would get us straight. Where well, had you straight you out? You see? So there's a lot of uh, uh, self-examination too that goes on even in your prayer life. Mm -hmm. right. See, God is raising individuals, but He's raising a, 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 
corporate entity also, right. but it raised individuals in that entity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And whatever God is doing through you, you allow him to do that through you. And that is, that, that shows the rest of it of what God has, what you acquired of God. Mm -hmm. What you ate mm -hmm. this morning. What you ate this morning? First thing someone said, I had a couple of eggs, bacon and toast and a cup of coffee. Well, fine. What else did you eat? Uh, I didn't eat anything else. Did you have prayer? Mm -hmm. Just Christ to allow him to live in your life? That's eating too. Eating and drinking. Right? Since he's, he's spiritual, you can't eat him, drink him physically. Mm -hmm. But you eat him, drink him spiritually. Mm -hmm. Eat him, eat the word, and live in all the spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have to have the word with the living bread and the spirit to activate that word in well, you. So you can't live by just the Bible by itself. Come on, Harvey. Mm -hmm. That's where the Old Testament saints fail at. And first, you couldn't live by the Bible. You need the spirit to enable you, to guide you, and lead you in applying these scriptures in your day to day walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. And this is what I, this is not what they talked about all the time, I'm sure you. <clears throat> but I'm sure some of these things came up. But I'm thinking they, they came in <clears throat> with what God had done with them that week. Can you think of anything in your in your weekly travel last week where you actually saw God's hand? I just ask a question. Most believers can't see. They don't know that. And this is nothing to say that there's something wrong with you. It's nothing wrong with you. It's that in the sense that you are so dependent on me, Myers, and other teachers that you don't, you don't look that God has done something in your life that you need. It could be just something as much as you speaking a word to someone else and it's no more than just Jesus loves you. In some believer life, that's a great accomplishment. He is trying to get you to start speaking. And stop agreeing with the, 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 the negativity of what's being said. In the world system, there's always going to be something negative coming at you. Well, If you're grown, if you're growing and maturing in Christ, the believers and maturing believers' languages actually change. When the world says something to you, you can't say, or you can, but you you look for other ways to address that. That's right. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. You see, if someone is complaining about someone else, about someone else, well, you're not going to jump in and complain too. Right? If someone is speaking evil of someone else, are you going to join in and say, yes, that's the way it is? I'm thinking that you, you, you're not going to do that. Mercy. Are you? We don't do that, do we? Mercy. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's why you you have to have a, a new language. As I mean, uh, you're, you're speaking. You're speaking. Have to go through a transition so you can speak the same thing and speak it in a way where it builds up instead of turning down. As uh, we we we. We talked. I saw a little uh, Jordan come through here, and he's learning to speak some words. But he, he, he used to just crawl. Mm -hmm. And before he started crawling, his grandmother and, and granddad they 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 had him in arm. Mm -hmm. But now he, he wants to walk, and run a little bit. Mm -hmm. See, you're growing in the natural sense, but also you grow in the spiritual sense. When you're first born again, every referred to before, you you, you can't talk. You just got a new birth. And you're just so glad to be in the Word. You're so glad to be here. But you know how to actually express that because there's no maturity in Christ. Once you start to mature in Christ, then your language changes from the worldly, from a, from a, 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 a traditional, from an organized language, that the organized church speaks, to a language that's different from that. You have an alternative. You don't have to agree with what the world says. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with what the church says. You don't have to agree with what someone else says. 
You don't have to agree with anything else. All you have to do is agree with Christ. And you have to find a way in agreeing with Christ how to express that. Where it, it builds up instead of turning down. Right? Because the flesh uh, can go on a rampage. Right? You get it upset. It'll show you just how it can get. You think you think you're all right? Yeah, we're all right. We're doing fine. But something can come along and stir that flesh up to the point that where you don't even recognize yourself. Don't even recognize yourself. Glory. And they say, well, Lord, forgive me. But you don't know what happened. Huh? You're a nice little Christian today, and this evening you're a nice little Christian, but two hours from now, your language is just, just going crazy. The language. You're a new creature, so you have to find new ways of expression that new creature. The new creature cannot be expressed in the format of the old creature. Right? If you're a new, new if it tells you then you're a new creature, what Christ now is what you're doing is not new, it's the same old thing you've been doing all the time. So you got to find ways to allow Christ to work in you to produce this new man and with this new language. Right? New way of expression. I'm sorry. You, you, you said, I'm sorry. Well, you're really not sorry. You didn't say it. You said it, but it didn't come through the Spirit. Right? And you have to be open for rebuke, for correction, for reproving. Right? And the person that you, you, you're open to is one who has grown and matured in certain areas. None of us are perfect. I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about certain areas that, that we welcome reproving. Mm -hmm. We welcome correction because we are watchmen for your soul. Mm -hmm. I watch for my wife's soul, my daughter. All of us, we watch for each other's soul. Mm -hmm. And we ought to be able to, to accept some things that people point out that enable us to live a more mature life. And you, another way you learn maturity is to be around those that are mature. Mm -hmm. I didn't say people that were, that were grown. I said mature. Glory. Just because you're grown doesn't mean you're mature. Amen. Just because you're old doesn't mean you're mature. Yes. Right? right? You want the person that matured in what? In Christ. Right. And don't and just because the person is younger or, or older has nothing to do with it. It's the Christ in them that we're looking for. You ain't been around here long as I have. Well, you ain't said a whole lot. You ain't been around long as I have. <laughs> well, you, you debate about that. Yeah, you haven't been around long as I have. Oh, uh, uh, Jay. But that, mean, that don't mean that Jay can't teach me. And he actually taught me some things last week. I'm not going to live to discuss that right now. But I did pick up some things from my house that the cross... You need to see that. Don't get upset with the man. Don't get upset with anybody. If the, if the, if the cross is doing what it was designed to do, you're allowed to do it. It can't kill self and you expect Christ to live through self if that self hasn't been crucified. Or you're not allowing the cross to do its work. In your setting, in your coming today on and, and, and to the fellowship on Wednesday and Tuesday night, if the cross is doing some work, allow it to do the work. It's going to allow Christ to have more access Amen. to you. Wherever the, the flesh is still flesh, Christ doesn't have access to that. Doesn't have access to it. That's why some of us, and I'm talking about general, general speaking here, some of us are poor witnesses for Christ. Because that self, that part of you, that Christ is trying his best to come through and to magnify himself and to glorify himself, that, that part of the flesh, you, you, still, you, have, you still have it. I, this is mine. I, I, Christ, I know you died with me, but this is mine. I got to keep this. No. You have to let that go. Because actually, Christ, the cross is already dealt with. You just have to experience the suffering. Yes. Of it. See? If you're going to reign with Christ, you've got to also do what? 
You got to suffer with it. Don't think of riding on jump on a white horse and ride back with him and no suffer. <laughs> but that's a lot of people think that, but that's not it. If Christ suffered once for us, amen, then we have to suffer. Paul says that. If any man make Christ a new creature, and if you're going to reign with Christ, that must be what? Suffering. No riding the white horse. No coming back with them uh, in the fire, ch on all them church and things like that. No, none of that until there's some suffering. Mm -hmm. If you're in heaven and there's no suffering, uh, you don't been through Gehenna. Mm -hmm. And out of darkness. That's right. But you're going to suffer. The overcome of suffering. That's right. Well, come on. The man child suffers. Thank you. Yeah. He suffers. Mm -hmm. And it will get to the point that where you you don't welcome suffering, but when it comes, you allow it to do its work. Amen. You see? Mm -hmm. Any questions? What what we here on that topic? Do you know what it means to suffer? You can suffer. You can't, you can suffer collectively, but I think that the individual suffering is where the cross do its work. Because it has to do a work on you, 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 all of them. Amen. Has to do an individual work. Amen. But we also suffer collectively in allowing Christ to do what it needs to do in all of us. This is where Paul says, they spoke about him to one another. And what? Unbelievers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can only, there are two ways you can speak. You can speak verbally and you can speak in your life. Mm -hmm. For a young believer that's just got here and just born again and not learned how to fully express Christ and have not really experienced Christ in growth, his best bet is to keep his mouth shut as much as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? And just because you know something doesn't mean it's applied at that time. And when you, when, this is something that I learned. When you, when you're with a bunch of a, a bunch of mature group of people, you listen. You listen. That's what you do. You listen to that one that has grown. You listen to him or her that has grown and matured in Christ. That don't mean they're perfect. That simply means they have experienced Christ's life. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do is get right out of that and hear as much as you probably can so that when the situation comes, you can apply Christ there. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just because a person old don't mean you know nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. Just because you got a million dollars don't mean no you know Zach. Mm -hmm. He don't know anything if he don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't care how successful you are, how beautiful you are, how big you are, what kind of money you got, you're just a poor as a snake if you don't know Jesus. Amen. I don't care how successful you've been in this world, you will lose in the next one. Amen. Mm. Glory. I don't care how many accolades you placed on the, the backs of others have done good in this world, they have done nothing. I don't care how successful they are. I don't care how many highs or trophies, how many accolades they got. It means absolutely nothing. Yes, right. When you're into the, to the judgment seat of Christ. Glory. Mm -hmm. All that stuff you got just fading. Mm -hmm. No eternal value whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We waste our time. We waste our time. Waste our time fostering and going off that which is materialistic. Amen. Mm. Had no value whatsoever. Amen. No value. Everything you go after in this world, you go and get it, and eventually you have to trade it in, or throw it aside, or put it in the trash can. Because it's no good. So true. Even the ideas and technology, as what you was speaking just then, the phone. Eventually it's going to rot in your hand, it's going to have to be updated. Because you're living in a world that's materialistic. And nothing Satan has, nothing Satan offers to you has any value, long-term value. Amen. Amen. Never satisfied. Glory. Absolutely. Glory. Don't get tied up in this world. 
Love not the world, Christ said, and loves the world. Because if you do that, then the love of the Father is in you. Mm -hmm. And whatever you love, that's what's going to come out of you. Mm -hmm. You love money, you might dabble around here and speak about Jesus for a minute, but you can jump back on money. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. You love having your own way. You might give in every now and then, on, but Bobby. your whole business about yourself. Right. Yeah, right By what you want, what you want, what you have, what you can get. That's what it's all about. It's about self. Now, you can't speak to an unbeliever and allow him to ever see Christ expressed if all that stuff is in you. See, most times, most believers, they, uh, uh, because I experience it myself, they just look, oh yeah, surface. Mm -hmm. The surface believers. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you start getting deep yep. down in here, mm -hmm. what the road meets the road, what bone and marrow is, oh, yeah. they, they don't, don't like for that. Mm -hmm. But that's where life is. That's right. That's where right. it's at. Where's that? That's where the real substance is. Mm -hmm. It's deep down here. Mm -hmm. It ain't Red Cross that, oh, you look so nice, that pretty dress, uh, hey, you got a nice so, looking car. Oh, Lord, then bless you, blah, blah, blah. And going down the road there before you get on, you gossip about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think you got a nice looking car. My car been hurt. I ain't saying nothing about it, but my car been hurt. Well, All that kind of stuff. Yes, that surface yes. is. And how can you witness with all that, yes. that fleshly, dirty, not in a dirty, dusty stuff coming out of you? You can't. Because we're dust but dust. Dust and dirt. So when you speak, if you're speaking out of the flesh, you're dust but dust. Glory. Glory. Mm -hmm. That's plain dust. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to speak to a, a person that's, 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 that's an unbeliever, even when we speak to ourselves, we can't keep speaking this dust that actually needs nothing. It may look good right now. I got a little trophy on the chest, but I got trophies that I, I don't even know where they are. We got trophy playing with a softball right. and all that kind of stuff. And I just got trophy and trophy and, and, and placards and stuff from churches and saying how great you were when you come in and put yeah. And I and I put that stuff in a box so we don't even want it in. And Jay saw one of them yesterday. He said, What is it, Grandma? I said, It's a trophy. He said, What's a trophy? <laughs> But those trophies, some people in Hollywood got it, got uh, what we call them, Academy Awards awesome. and all that stuff yes. packed away in boxes. Mm -hmm. They don't even know where it is. Mm -hmm. Or down to the pawn shop. Because that stuff is just short lived. There's no satisfaction in anything of this world. Amen. No satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Only one that gives you satisfaction is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And see, when you begin to place all the accolades and all that well, gospel part and all this lying and cheating and, and half living from Jesus and all this surface preaching and surface living and surface teaching. Eventually God can get right down to where the rubber meets the road and you can get him and say, I'm going to share Jesus. If I can't share Christ, I don't have anything else to give you. And it's really what the uh, disciples, uh, John and uh, what the Peter and John, mm -hmm. going to the temple on that day. Yeah. And the beggar was on the side yeah. of the street to ask for yeah. something. To, seven, to, seven. So how we not? I said, I ain't, we, we just a poor snakes, but we ain't got nothing. But we got something that's more richer than yeah. anything. Yeah. We got Jesus. Yeah. It, it's a, it, that that don't mean that God gonna break you, take it down. You got, but you can't place emphasis on this and and hold on to it. You gotta say, God, uh, uh, God, look, strip me of anything to keep me from being a servant, a servant of yours. Amen. Being fully open to you. That don't mean no God gonna take your car. He's not gonna take it. He, he wants you to keep your car because you might have to pick up somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna break you because you might have to buy a lunch for somebody. Mm -hmm. Come on, Harvey. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But you can't let lunches and cars rule you. Mm -hmm. Watches and, 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 and cars and shoes run your life. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is sometimes. It, it, just it, what we what we wear sometimes it just get to the point that where this is me well it could be you but is that Christ in you I'd like to see Christ in you I would love to see Christ in everyone when we come together we speak and know about Jesus just just tell Jesus if that's all else if God has stripped us of everything else and that stripping has re been replaced by Christ there's nothing in us but Jesus right 
I'm not speaking against anything. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking for Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the cup. It looks good on the outside. Well, mm -hmm. but there's, well, it looks good. It just looks good. Mm -hmm. But the closer we get to it, we take a pick. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how some believers and some, uh, it just look good on the outside. Mm -hmm. But if Christ is doing this, He's taking a look in the inside. And he said, just like dead man bones. He said, cups and utensils look good on the outside, but inside, they're dirty. So watch the inside first. Well, So God wants to do that. He wants to clean up the inside and, and work it out. And it has nothing to do with the way you look. It has to do with how clean you are on the inside. Well, I got to go get my hair fixed. I get my shoes done, and get my hair done, get my nails done, and get me a nice suit so I look good. Well, glory. Who you looking good for? Huh? Trying to impress somebody. But when impressing stops, it is Christ that's expressed. Well, the more that type of mentality is dealt with, and then the more Christ can be expressed. You see what I'm saying? All of us have been through this, this thing of, of uh, looking good for people. We said, good to look, look good for God. <laughs> yeah, look good, we look good for God. Yeah. It does look good, we look good for God, but we're not talking about the physical, right. we're talking about spirit. Amen. That's right. Paul, I don't think he had a decent suit to his name. Mm -hmm. I really don't. He probably lost it in the ship, first shipwreck. Mm -hmm. Or got a stone about the false brother. Come on, oh, when they were letting out over the basket, uh, they could have yes. let out but a robe and a couple of pairs. Really. I don't know. But I don't think it had anything compared to what we had. Mm -hmm. So that was out of Paul's way on, as far yeah. as ministering. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't think Jesus had a big entourage either. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had a special carriage he got in. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of his cronies grew up in a, in a, in a high price chariot with wheels of gold and, and uh, the horses with nice bridles on and stuff like that. I, I, I didn't see it in here in scripture. It wasn't about the appearance of the outside. It was going on in the inside. I said what goes on the inside will eventually come out outside. And what is, is inside it's going gonna, it gonna, it gonna to come outside. Right? Whatever it is that you, you are about or I are about it's going to come out. I don't care what's been said. You can't, uh, you don't know me. Because I haven't said anything. That's the gentleman came in. You don't know me. You talk all morning, all evening, he gets up and leaves. You still don't know him. He seemed like a nice guy. He had a nice little suit on. Uh, he looked clean. Yeah, he smelled good. I, I smelled him when he walked in. He smelled good. And uh, But he, he, didn't, he didn't say anything. He was motionless while he sat there. He said, but one day, he comes in and he expresses himself. You don't know what's inside of a person just looking at it. What he got on, or what he don't have on, what he's wearing, or what he's driving. You don't know who that person is until he begins to open up and then you find out really what's on the inside. What my, what my, what my joy? These young boys out of nowadays, they might look good, but they ain't got nothing in them right now. They ain't got nothing in them. Ain't nothing in them. Nothing. I was young, 14, 15 years old myself. Won't nothing in me. Nothing but self. See, as you grow and mature, there's less of self there and more of Christ. How do you get that? Because you're at a place where you can feed. You're at a place where you're going to acquire more, right? So there's more of self being dealt with. Well, 
you can't miss a meal and think you'll be the strongest as everybody else when you come come to come to a setting. Mm -hmm. What? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Go all day. Go eat good this morning. <laughs> miss lunch. And by the time our supper get around, you're hungry as a dog. But see, spiritually, we don't see that. We don't understand on, that. The same on. principle. Yes. You can eat good on Sunday morning, yeah. and by the middle of the week, uh, whether you know or not, you're actually hungry. That's right. mm -hmm. not, not your body. It could be full of chips and uh, potato chips and sodas and, and ice cream and cookies and ginger snacks. It could be taxable. And that's probably the reason why many of us don't make it. Because those cookies, those chips, and the other stuff you eat, that gonna put you to sleep. Huh? You eat chips, the first thing you wanna do is, 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 is love. Eat a belly full of ice cream, and the first thing you do, you, you put the remote in your hand, you lay right down on the couch. <laughs> because that stuff is not really good for your system, it slows you down. That's why when I come in on Sunday morning, I don't eat anything. I may have a cup of coffee. That's about it. See, your body digests food. And when it digests, it takes away a lot of the physical strength. Because it digests it. That's why when you eat, you want to go to sleep or you want to lay down. Because the body is digesting that food and it takes a lot of strength to take that food and digest it and send it through the proper system and the enzyme working, the enzyme, all that stuff working and be, uh, maybe an hour later you, you oh, I can get it, go now, I'm good now. Yeah, that, that did his work. Same principle with Christ. And sometimes, let me tell you this, when you think that you are falling and that you can't go any further, Christ is doing a great work. That's why Christ does his great work. Because when you're falling and think, ah, God knows I'm going to get out of this thing. I don't know what I'm going to do here. Well, the thing is, you got to trust. During the free fall, you got to trust. You got to trust. You, you, you got a parachute, but that parachute hasn't opened yet. And so you act like in a free fall. But Christ is our reserve parachute. Once we get to the place where we want to, then the chute comes out. You see what I'm saying? It's miserable in that free fall. Yes, sir. You just don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You can't put your hands on nothing. You can't figure nothing out. Everything going wrong or it's against you and everything. You just don't know. And you've been calling on God. Yeah, call on God. Speak for God. But you're still falling in this free fall. Mm -hmm. That's when Christ doing his great work. He's building you up. Strengthening you right there to trust him. Without free for all, you never trust your, your parachute. Well, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You got a parachute reserve. Yeah, you got to trust. Mm -hmm. You got to trust the fall. You got to trust the trial, trust the tribulation to do exactly what God requires of it to do for you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean you've been there. Some of you are there already in a free fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you don't kick the cat. <laughs> Kick the trash can, bam! Ball your fist up and say, God, no. I wish I allowed this mess, boy. You're free falling then. You're free falling. Glory. Come Can you see that, Jay? Mm -hmm. You're free falling. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And God said, Trust me. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Call on me. Yeah. Call on me. But while you're calling, there is no rescue. But you, it is, you understand, it's authority there, and the free fall, if it, catch you. And life is full of free fall. You should have one free fall and think, oh, I got here, I'm all good, good now. No, you're not good now, because there's another free fall coming. And each free fall, you find more confidence and more experience of trusting Christ. Free falls are designed, I believe, for, for trusting. Mm -hmm. He's always there. But how do you know he's there in your free fall? Mm -hmm. But when, you, when you're looking for a parachute and look for a way out over here, instead of trusting, right. you're looking outside of yourself, looking outside of Christ to hinder you from, from, that, from that whatever you're going through. I hope that makes sense. I was on. Uh,
had a, quite a few free throws in my life. And, uh, one of them was when I left the uh, building over here. But actually in my heart, I really wasn't afraid because when, when I <coughs> made my final uh, 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 exit, the, a burden was lifted. A burden was lifted. When you leave something where God is not, there's always a, a burden that's never lifted. Amen. And let me tell you this. When God moves you out of a place, mm -hmm. Thank you. you've experienced all that it had to offer in growth. Yes. That's it. That's it. You need to move on so I can mature you and grow you even more and more unto the image of my dear son. Mm -hmm. so, when, for, for, so when time comes to trust, you, you, don't you give up. You trust him. Mm -hmm. Look, it don't make, let me say, it, it makes no difference what the world says, how the world looks, what the world is going through, what you hear from your friends, your neighbor, your girlfriends, your boyfriends, your wives, or whatever. You trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. Trust Jesus. Because all those voices, they need to be heard. For experience. Well. That when the, when the voice is called later on down the road, you know his voice. Mm -hmm. Glory. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, voices are all the time, Jay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need to be able to, through the spirit, through the sharpening, through the mis, um, uh, maturing of the spirit, need to be able to sharpen our spirit to a point that where we know his voice when it speaks. And after we know his voice in such a way that if he's speaking, we're already in there doing what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Our spirit is mingled with his spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't don't worry about trial. Just a lot, lot of trial to mature you mm -hmm. and to build you. Look here. And when you go to speak to unbelievers, you have something to offer. Because your walk is consistent with your talk. Mm -hmm. She always talking about going to church, but every time I see she up at, at, at this club. Mm -hmm. I know she sings in the choir, but this world knows, that world knows that. Yeah, they know. Yeah, they know. Oh, nice. yeah, they know. oh, she look good going to church. But uh, but when you come in, she's just the meanest devil. Mm -hmm. They know that. Yeah. And so apparently you look good out here, but inside there's a bunch of mess in here. So God wants to clean it up too. Mm -hmm. Make you a vessel meant for the master. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then speaking was a way of prophesying, a kind of prophesying, emphasizing the New Testament. Unlike the Old Testament, this, this is right in your footnotes, Old Testament, uh, uh, those who believe in Christ do not need to wait on the Spirit of the Lord to come upon them in order to prophesy or order to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need to sit around in a, in a cave or stand on a mountain somewhere on a rock for God to speak to you. He can speak to you right now because it's in you. That's right. And you can prophesy now because you know the word and the spirit can use you to prophesy. Mm -hmm. Not to speak in the tongue, but perhaps so. No. And I think Paul says, this, for this reason, Paul could say, he who is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. One spirit. I'm going to stop right here. But I do want to say I'm going to pick up this next week. <clears throat> Listen. Here. God had made man from the, no, not, not man. I'm not going to man. From the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we took you out of man. Mm -hmm. That's why they go there. Mm -hmm. You were with that? Mm -hmm. But he took man out of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. He wanted to Man became a what? The That's dust right. and the body. The dust, I mean, the spirit and the soul and the body came together, and man became what? A living soul. Mm -hmm. So, if God is a spirit, then how can God, how, how can God speak to this flesh and bones and, and dust and dirt off from out of the ground? How? The spirit. Mm -hmm. He gave him the spirit. Mm -hmm. And when that spirit died, when Adam ate on the tree of knowledge, good and death, God could no longer speak to Adam. Mm -hmm. God speaks to us in the spirit. That's why I went back 
this the spirit joined to one spirit is the, is the, is the Lord. Who who is joined to the spirit is one is one joined to the Lord is one spirit. So if you've been born again, you have become a mingled spirit. Mm -hmm. And you're one with Christ in spirit. Mm -hmm. So when all of Christ to speak to you, he had to speak to you where? In spirit. Because yes. the flesh can't receive anything of God. Nope. The flesh is at enmity with God. Actually, the flesh hates God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If you look back on your life, there were times you want nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. All you want to do is party. Mm -hmm. Drink of everything you get your hands on. Lie, cheat, curse. Mm -hmm. You want nothing to do with God. Because the flesh actually doesn't want anything to do with God. But when you got to a point in your life, you knew you needed something. God knew that because God had hinged you up in this corner right here. And he called you, and you called on him, he saved you. Listen, God is so smart. He knew exactly what it took to get me to that place. That I will call. Thanks, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly what to do. I just thank God. Mm -hmm. God knew exactly what he was doing mm -hmm. to get me to a place that I will call. Amen. Mm -hmm. I call on everything before I call on him. Yeah. Everything. Everything I can think of in the sense of me getting involved and calling, I got involved with. The only thing I didn't get involved was murder. I stole, I did everything, I robbed, I did all that stuff. You preacher, how do you think I got saved? God don't save righteous people, he saved unrighteous people. God don't save nobody that's been a good little Christian all that life. He saved people that, that's been saved, that know they've been somewhere and able to share it with those who are, are, are in prison, bound, and that Christ is the one that set them free. Mm -hmm. No, I, my life was. I can share with some people more than I can share here. Mm -hmm. No, man. <laughs> no, that, that can't be. I don't believe it. I said, why not? How can I talk about someone that saved me from something if it, if, it did, if I was in something that he could save me from? Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you're not lost, you, you don't call. Mm -hmm. If you think you're all right, you don't call. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why, why call for help if you, if you think you're all right? And I did that for years. I, I, I thought I was all right. I do what somebody else did, or listen to the news or whatever, and did everything in me. And then one day, one night, I had to, I had to call. All of us been there, and God still have us in this this little this little this little thing here that we have to do continue to do calling. Because once that once we escape out of that, we went back where we were. So God calls us and seals us and puts us in, 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 in Jesus Christ. We've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And we are His. And God will take care of us. Remember that. This old man speaking, God will take care of you. I'm not 20 years old. I'm not 30 years old. I'm not 40, 55, 60. I'm 70 years old. And I'm telling you, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. Doing your free fall, doing that hard bounce off the ground, he will take care of you. The free fall, the bouncing, all that has to do with God's eternal purpose. The evil man had been, God can use him to bring about his eternal purpose. All the evil in the world, you know what God uses? To bring about his eternal purpose. He didn't create either, but he can take evil and make it to bring about his eternal purpose. So when you see another person so evil, pray for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't criticize them, pray for him. Somebody not out there right, don't criticize them in their faith, pray for him. Pray for him, pray for him, pray for him. Then you'll find yourself not criticizing anybody and all that, 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 that old criticism has been uh, taken out of you and now you can minister. Mm -hmm. Whole lot of stuff in us. That God needs to move. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. And when we come in, Let's speak of Christ. That's who we spirits all week. Right? That's who's been carrying us. That's who <coughs> these, we, we've been de delivered and set free from all these things. So why not come back and tell me, say, oh, brother, 
The Lord did this in my life. And many got to touch me. Jay got one in me. And one only got to say, the Lord did this. The Lord did this. The Lord did this. No, you didn't do this. They didn't do this. The Lord did this. This didn't do this. The Lord did this. This is what you're talking about here. Those, those believers, they spoke forth the Lord to the unbelievers and to themselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Now we'll pick up here uh, on the uh, how marvelous the Spirit is mingled with us next time because we didn't get that much today. Any questions? Any testimony? Anybody's got anything they can share the, the ability of the body of Christ? Say, you know, when you free fall, you have to look at it at a, at a different angle, you know. Because I, like the time when I was going down to see my mom and the, and the rock hit my windshield, I, I was thinking about, oh my God, I got to pay some more money, it just messed up. And then I talked to him, he said, that's all right, that thing happened, you know, they have like it. But anyway, then I started looking at it at a different way. I said, what in the world am I worried about? I said, nobody got hurt. You know, and then the it can be placed, replaced, you know, and stuff like that. When we start, when I started looking at it as a different thing, the devil wanted me to look at it, oh my God, look at it, he tried to kill me and all this stuff. When we look at stuff like that, that's the first thing he gonna do when you free falling. You was like, how am I gonna make it? And first thing we started to do is why? But then we look at it another way, say, so, well, at least I got something to eat. I got this, well, I got that. Yeah, so what am I worried about? You know, amen. and then it's, it happened to other people, then it's going to happen to me too. I'm not exempt. So when we started looking at things a different way, it's not bad at all. You know, matter of fact, it's, you can rejoice in it. You can tell us I'm rejoicing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Good. You rejoice in the fact that a uh, 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 big title jump off the in the Buster Richard. Yes, he was speaking. One thing I, I, the Holy Spirit showed me that if you watch someone who jumps out of the plane and free fall, if you pull the parachute too fast, you can actually do more damage. Amen. 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 And that's what that's a good point. That's what we do. Pull the parachute too fast. That's right. We all, you know, so they, so if somebody jump out the parachute for the first time, that instructor would tell them, now you pull the parachute. Mm -hmm. If you just jump out of the plane instantly mm -hmm. and pull the parachute too fast, you actually can do more, more damage. damage. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. When we free fall, we won't rely on Christ. We pull the parachute too fast and then we do more damage. Yeah. But you said once you disperse, you jump out of the knob, you free fall enough, mm -hmm. you'll learn that I'm going to pull this parachute with Christ. Amen. Christ will pull the parachute. He'll pull the parachute. I'm just going to free fall yeah. and trust Him. Yeah. A lot of times we free fall and We'll pull the parachute and won't trust Christ. Mm -hmm. You make a good point. To, to I, I, you know, when you went through your sickness mm -hmm. uh, in the hospital mm -hmm. a couple years ago, um, you were in a type of free fall. Mm -hmm. You had no control over that. But God, God caught you and brought you out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good because we need those type of experiences <coughs> to know that we can trust God. And God will keep his promise. Yes. It, it's so funny, Pastor. You start talking about eating and sugar and caffeine and all that stuff. And I had been debating about whether to even talk about this this morning, but I, I, I'm free falling right now. And, and for years and years and years and years, I have depended on sugar, mm -hmm. caffeine, sure. cookies, candy, and I even realized, even on my job, it's a high-paced, stressful working environment mm -hmm. all day long. And when I get stressed, I, I grab a piece of candy, I grab a cookie. You know, it calms my nerves. It, 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 that has always been my go-to mm -hmm. coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I, I suffer bad from migraine headaches. And I've known in my heart all these years that it was the caffeine and the sugar that causes these migraines. But the addict in me won't let go of those substances. And I had prescription medicine that would calm the migraines down to allow me to continue mm -hmm. okay. the addictive behavior. But lately, this medicine is not working, and, and I'm, okay. the, I've suffered all week, all weekend with this migraine, and the medicine isn't working, 
and I know I have to give the sugar mm. up. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, I'm free falling, and I know that's what it Amen. is. Amen. And, and I just, you know, it's no different from an addict with any other yeah. substance that you Amen. would depend on to get you through. And I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you all to pray, keep me in your prayers. Pray for you, anoint me, and I, I'm going to give this thing up. I, Christ is going to do this yes. in my life, and Amen. I am going to get Amen. this victory through him because I know I can yes. and not yeah. depend Amen. on these other things Amen. for coping mechanisms. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know, that's a good testimony. Because, you know, we look closer to our own lives. We, are, we have addictions ourselves. Amen. True. You're not on drugs or alcohol or anything, but we're addicted to something Amen. And that's not good for us. Amen. And the thing was, now, just imagine if, if that if we remove, if God would allow Christ to remove that yes. how it would transform us yes. and our thinking, yes. everything. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I no longer am, I got to have this. Yes, Lord. See, Satan will keep you uh, uh, trapped in areas amen. where actually Christ has already set you free. Yes, right, man. Where he keep you set there yes, because he give you all the yes, kind sir. of excuses yes, and justify why you're That's still right. doing what That's you're right. doing. I think that's what you're That's saying. Right. Right. Exactly. And if you know you're doing something that is harmful to you, that's a that's an addict. That's addictive behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's harming you. You know it's harming you, but you can't help yourself. That's addictive behavior. And it's good till you get to the point you know you can't help yourself. Yes, right. That's right. Then you call. They call on me. I'm, I'm, I'm free calling. I'm calling on him. I, I, I'm desperate now. I got Amen. to call on him. I have to. Amen. That's, that's wonderful. When you get to the point, I, I think some.